How often do you look at the at the guests and you're sitting there and you say to yourself, who bought this? <laughs> have, uh, have, uh, are you thinking this now, Phil? <laughs> In a world where spill the tea has become a cultural catchphrase, we've lost the man who first brewed the pot. Phil Donahue, the trailblazing talk show host who turned daytime TV into a forum for frank discussions and controversial topics, has passed away at age 88. Long before social media gave everyone a platform to voice their opinions, Donahue handed the microphone to his studio audience, transforming passive viewers into active participants. His groundbreaking approach laid the foundation for the interactive media media landscape we navigate today. From his start in 1967 to his final show in 96, Donahue tackled issues that many considered too hot for daytime television. He didn't just interview celebrities, he dove into the heart of social and political controversies, giving voice to perspectives that were often marginalized. As we bid farewell to this television pioneer, we look back on a career that spanned nearly three decades and changed the face of American media. Longtime TV talk show host Phil Donahue has died at the age of 88. Donahue was best known for hosting The Phil Donahue Show, which had a 29-year run on the air. He was a staple of daytime television, winning nine Daytime Emmy Awards for outstanding hosts throughout his career. His family said he died at his home surrounded by loved ones, including his wife of 44 years, Emmy-winning actress Marlo Thomas. The Passing of a Television Icon on August 18, 2024, the world of television lost one of its most influential figures. Phil Donahue, the pioneering talk show host who revolutionized daytime television, passed away at his home in Manhattan at age 88. His family announced he had died peacefully, surrounded by loved ones, including his wife of 44 years, actress Marlo Thomas, his sister, grandchildren, children, and even his beloved golden retriever Charlie. The news of Donahue's passing sent ripples through the entertainment industry and beyond. Fellow talk show host Oprah Winfrey, whose own career was deeply influenced by Donahue, paid tribute to him on social media. Quote, There wouldn't have been an Oprah show without Phil Donahue being the first to prove that daytime talk and women watching should be taken seriously. He was a pioneer. I'm glad I got to thank him for it. Rest in peace, Phil. Donahue's death marked the end of an era in television history. His innovative approach to daytime talk shows, which included audience participation and tackling controversial topics, laid the groundwork for countless shows that followed. Even in his final months, Donahue's impact on American culture was recognized at the highest levels. In May 2024, just three months before his passing, he was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom by President Biden, acknowledging his lifetime of contributions to American media and public discourse. His mom was ready to send him to Benedictine, uh, and luckily she saw that there was a new Catholic school coming up in Lakewood, and Phil was an OLA guy, so it was gonna be close to home and he wouldn't have to get on a bus to go to Benedictine anymore. From Cleveland to daytime TV stardom. Phil Donahue's journey to becoming a television icon began in Cleveland, Ohio. Born December 21, 1935, into a middle-class Irish Catholic family, Donahue's early life was shaped by his parents' work ethic and his Catholic education. His father, Philip, worked as a furniture sales clerk, while his mother, Catherine, was a shoe clerk in a department store. Donahue's education at St. Edward High School in Lakewood, Ohio, where he was part of the first graduating class in 1953, laid the foundation for his future career. His time at the University of Notre Dame, where he earned a Bachelor of Business Administration in 1957, further honed his skills and broadened his perspectives. Donahue's broadcasting career began modestly in 1957 as a production assistant at KYW Radio and Television in Cleveland. It was here that fate intervened, giving Donahue his first on-air opportunity when he filled in for an absent announcer. This chance event set him on a path that eventually led to national fame. After a brief detour as a bank check sorter in Albuquerque, Donahue found his way back to broadcasting as a program director for WABJ Radio in Adrian, Michigan. His talent for journalism soon became evident as he worked for a stringer for the CBS Evening News and later as an anchor for the morning newscast at WHIO-TV in Dayton, Ohio. These are better than pixies. Like they them. are? Yeah. <laughs> but you don't, have, you don't have to have the fingers with that, but you can cut them. I, you don't mind, though, if I use mine. No. We're in a hurry. I think you feel better at home. They're good. <laughs> Now, if you say they ain't good, there's something wrong with your tummy. <laughs> it is taste. 
Well, I'm going to tell you this. Uh, this is different. It is different. The birth of the Phil Donahue Show. Donahue's big break came in 1967 when Dayton's WLD-TV launched The Phil Donahue Show. It was here that he introduced his groundbreaking concept of audience participation, a format that changed the landscape of daytime television forever. The show's early days were marked by financial constraints and creative problem solving. As Donahue later recalled in his memoir, quote, it may have been a full three years before any of us began to understand that our program was something special. The show's style had developed not by genius, but by necessity. The familiar talk show heads were not available to us in Dayton, Ohio. The result was improvisation. This led to a format where audience members could directly ask questions to guests, creating a dynamic and unpredictable atmosphere that was unlike anything else on television at the time. Donahue's first guest, atheist Madeline Murray O'Hare, set the tone for the show's willingness to to tackle controversial topics head-on. The show's success led to national syndication in 1970. By 74, Donahue had moved to Chicago, expanding its reach and influence. As you know, you're the uh, fat cat uh, developer, and uh, you know the book on you is that you throw little old ladies who can't afford their rent out of the apartment. Uh, I don't think that's the book on me, if you want to know that. Well, uh, I mean, certainly I, think, I don't think it is at all. Tackling tough topics and changing minds. Throughout his career, Donahue was known for his willingness to address controversial issues that other shows shied away from. His program became a platform for discussions on feminism, civil rights, consumer protection, and anti-war sentiment. His approach was to bring these often divisive topics into the open, allowing for a frank and honest dialogue. His guests ranged from political figures like Hubert Humphrey and Ronald Reagan to activists like Gloria Steinem and Ralph Nader. He also featured cultural icons such as Muhammad Ali, who famously boxed with Donahue on air, and music legend Elton John. The show's format allowed for moments of unexpected poignancy and humor. In one episode, he played football with rock star Alice Cooper, showcasing the show's ability to blend serious discussion with lighthearted moments. Marlo Thomas is back. It's been a couple of years since she last visited with us. You are so thin. Am I? Uh-huh. Thinner oh. than I think last time. You've never been fat. No, no. Love on live TV. One of the most significant moments in Donahue's personal and professional life was in 1977 when Marlo Thomas appeared as a guest on his show. Their chemistry was palpable and viewers watched as they seemed to fall in love on air. During the show, Donahue told Thomas, quote, you are really fascinating. To which she replied, but you are wonderful. I said it when we are off the air. And I want to say you're loving and generous and you like women and it's a pleasure. And whoever is the woman in your life is very lucky. This on-air connection blossomed into a real-life romance, and Donahue and Thomas married in 1980. Their partnership became one of Hollywood's most enduring, lasting 44 years until Donahue's passing. Just one moment, Vladimir. Uh, it, it can be reasonably argued that if that happened, and if the American reconnaissance showed an Aeroflot civilian aircraft on which perhaps the stewardess with whom we spoke a moment ago may have been a passenger, that the technology exists to determine that that is a civilian airplane, even presuming ill intent, which we do not. Breaking Barriers In the 80s, Donahue participated in groundbreaking television experiment known as the U.S.-Soviet Space Bridge. Partnering with Soviet journalist Vladimir Posner, Donahue co-hosted a series of televised discussions between citizens of the U.S. and the Soviet Union. The innovative program allowed everyday people from both nations to ask each other questions, bridging the gap between two societies that had long been separated by political and ideological barriers. The Move to New York in 1985, Donahue moved to New York City, setting up shop at NBC's Studio 8G in Rockefeller Center. This move put Donahue at the center of the media world, further cementing his status as a national figure. During this period, he continued pushing boundaries. In 1984, he introduced many viewers to hip-hop culture, featuring breakdancing on national television for the first time. It also coincided with an expansion of its international reach. Donahue began airing in the UK on ITV's nighttime lineup. As the 90s progressed, the talk show landscape changed dramatically. The commitment to quality over sensationalism, while admirable, began to affect Donahue's ratings. Phil's outspoken opposition to the first Gulf War also contributed to a decline in viewership in some markets. By the mid-90s, several major market stations had dropped the show. Phil? Well, I think it's important to put yourself back in October 2002. This is less than a year after the Towers. Everybody wanted to bomb something. I mean, that's the way it looked to me. The final chapter. 
After the conclusion of the syndicated show in 96, Donahue remained active in media and political circles. In 2002, he made a brief return to television with a show on NBC, but it lasted only a few months. In his later years, he continued to engage with important social and political issues. In 2006, he co-directed the documentary Body of War, which told the story of a severely disabled Iraq War veteran. Now it's time to hear from you. What's your favorite memory of Phil Donahue? Let us know in the comments section below.